Hello, and welcome back to The Stars Made Me Do It. Uh, today, we're talking about Capricorn Mercury. Uh, it is Capricorn season. I'm psyched about it. Or am I? I don't know. We've got all three <laughs> of us here. We've got Martha, Mimi, and Sierra. Um, how are you guys feeling about Capricorn season? I feel like it's already like nearing not it's not nearing the end yet but it's like the beginning of Capricorn season went really fast because it's always like holiday end of year ah. mm -hmm. and now I feel like I'm ready to get into it and it's like I got to get into it fast because then it's suddenly going to be over but um I'm feel I feel like I'm doing good this particular Capricorn season we're having uh Mercury retrograde in Capricorn which is interesting that we're you know going to talk about this Mercury in Capricorn so um I don't know. But, and as I was saying with like Martha and with both of you, actually, like, I feel like this one has been a little bit, uh, softer as far as retrogrades go. Mm. And so this whole Capricorn season has been a lot of like the internal stuff, but in a gentler way. So I'm, I'm always happy in Capricorn season, but what about you, Martha? I am enjoying it because I have my ducks in the row in a row this year. I haven't mm -hmm. liked it in the past because I have Capricorn in the eighth house. So if you have any like untied things with government stiffs, um, it's not very nice. But this year I got my ducks in the row and it feels really good and I'm getting everything done and I love it. I love Capricorn yeah. season this year. What about you, Mimi? Yeah, I think like in comparison to last year where we had Capricorn season um, and Venus retrograde in Capricorn, I felt like that was really in my face, like the things that I need to get done and they were scary. And this year, like I'm doing the same things a year later, but better outcomes are coming from it. So I'm feeling like it's all in my sixth house of like appointments and things I need to do every day and the small things and kind of like mental health and stuff like that. And where last year it was really daunting this year, it's still daunting, but then by actually doing it, I find out information that makes it less daunting. I love yeah, that. Yeah. The results are, are not as scary. Yeah. It's I also like to just shout out to ourselves right now. If you haven't already, check us out on Patreon at the Stars Made Me Do It because this uh, this week I remember uh, Martha and I chatted about like well the we all do transits uh, over there, but I remember we talked about how this Capricorn season was very similar for the same thing for me, Mimi about like. I always get into yoga around Capricorn season, but it's for a different reason each time. And like, depending on the other planets going on, you know, it's like, we still have those same trends because Capricorn still shows up for me in the same place in my chart, but the other things going on. So yeah, shout out to ourselves over at <laughs> on Patreon for that. Follow us <laughs> if you don't, but, um, and if you don't know, we all have significant Leo placements, just shouting out ourselves. Yeah. yeah. And I love that for us. <laughs> But yeah, that's so, that's so interesting. You're right. Because as opposed to Mercury retrograde, like the Venus retrograde in Capricorn, that definitely plays up with different, uh, different things, even if it's in the same category. Yeah, absolutely. Like Venus retrograde was much more about my physical body and like really wanting to find balance and pleasure. Whereas this year with it being Mercury, it's like, this is so much more fact-based and it's mm -hmm. not about how it feels in my body. It's just like, oh, the logic of going to a dentist appointment means that I don't have to be afraid of going to the dentist anymore because I, I, that's in the past now, you know, like it's much more factual rather than like my Venus nervous system being, uh, Ugh. like activated or triggered. I needed that dentist reminder because I too have a dentist fear. I got to do it. Which like how Capricorn appropriate huh. ruled by Saturn, Saturn rules bones and teeth. So Ugh. everyone book your dentist appointment. <laughs> That is so funny because my partner is also just booked a dentist appointment. So <gasps> I've been like literally thinking about it every day. I'm like, you just have to do it, Sierra. You just have to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh. I have to tell you guys the dentist story anyway, but we'll do that later. So <laughs> before we get into Mercury and Capricorn or the 10th house, we always kind of allude that it's just in the sign, but we're also kind of including that the house placement uh, sort of relates to it as well. But before we get into all of that, make sure you follow us on social uh, media. We're at the stars made me podcast on Instagram. Uh, we're posting things on our stories in our feed all the time. So go check us out. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
And shall we get into just like, you know, this season, if you're just joining us on this episode, welcome. If you've been here the whole time, you know that this season we're doing uh, Mercury episodes for each of the, you know, each of the Zodiac signs. So we're here for Capricorn Mercury. And just like mini Capricorn overview is that Capricorn is an earth sign. It's a cardinal sign that it's the first sign of uh, winter. And it's mm-hmm. that internal energy. And uh, for our quick Mercury overview is that Mercury is all about how we experience and receive information, how we translate that information, communicate, think, learn, and it's our inner monologue. So mm. that is, you know, we're putting those those two concepts of Capricorn plus Mercury together here. Yeah. And if you want to know, like, if you really want to dive into Mercury, like it's about how you um like perceive your reality. It's how we I think we like look at our rising sign as your outlook on life, but I actually feel like that's more your outlook on who you are and your identity. And like your Mercury is your, the lens through which you see reality and the way that you like paint reality in your own mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the chicken versus the egg uh, discussion. I feel Mm. like, like, oh no, not the chicken versus the egg. That's not a good thing that I'm going to say, but what I, it's like, (laughs) how you see what's how you experience what's happening versus like what you're seeing happening. I think. Mm, yeah. It's, it's the processing of information. It's whatever information is being thrown your way, processing it. And then it's whatever, you know, your inner thoughts, like it's the thoughts you're receiving, the thoughts you're giving. It's all the information stuff, which is why Mercury is really cool. Because like we've mentioned before, it's both the external world and the internal world because how we process what's going on around us and how we process what's going on in our brains Mm -hmm. so mercury and capricorn we've got this like boss go for it cardinal earthy you know um structural practical energy with this mercury of processing information and thinking learning teaching Mm -hmm all the, all the brain stuff. So yeah. What are our thoughts here? Yeah. I feel like Mercury and Capricorn would be a very compartmentalized, uh, placement or Mercury in the 10th, because they're always looking at, or not always, but the way that I see it archetypically is like, they're always looking at things pretty black and white. Like, is this something I respect or is this something I don't respect? Is this something that turns a profit or is it something that brings a loss. Uh, and I think that like, even in the way that they communicate from all the Capricorn Mercuries that I know, they have quite a dry way of speaking and like their voices tend to be quite monotone. Um, but I think that they have like a very succinct and direct way of receiving information and then communicating that information as well. And for somebody who doesn't have, uh, like a similar way of communicating or, uh, you know, a similar mercury placement, it could be seen as quite cold or unemotional or, um, impersonal. And I'll throw out the word direct too. Cause I just mm. feel like they cut out the fluff. Yeah, exactly. I love this. And I'm, I have my, my dad is a Capricorn Mercury and my husband is a Capricorn Mercury and it's just it's so you know whereas my dad's a Capricorn my husband's an Aquarius so they've got different you know they've got different sun signs but they've got that Capricorn Mercury and I just think about how like planning a trip because the three of us like to go on trips together and me with my Sagittarius Mercury where I'm like this is fun and exciting and let's just like go for it and we don't need full plans like I'm here for the ride even though I've got a lot of Capricorn going on but still and then the two of them that they were like on the computer planning out okay well let's look let's make all the comparisons between the hotels see which one has the better location see which one has this let's look at all of these restaurants does this one have sierra friendly foods that we can eat which is going to make more sense for the activity we're doing that day and to me i'm like this is so fucking boring like whatever and the two of them were just like together on the computer living their best lives and it was the it was the cutest thing to see but i feel like that's such a capricorn mercury of like we are going to logically uh, make a plan so that we can have the best possible success from the, you know, the choices that we make and the way, and I don't know, it's just like, we're setting ourselves up for success here. Mm. And, and it's just, it's great how, I mean, I always benefit from people with Capricorn Mercuries, but it's also, I can see how, um, that dryness that you talked about, it's totally, it can be perceived that way because, um, it's, we're not having emotion involved in the same way, perhaps. 
because it's Mercury. Yeah, and that it's it's interesting because that's something that I feel like has come up in Capricorn season is like especially a Capricorn Mercury or Mercury in the 10th house, like it doesn't have to smile to show you that they're happy because maybe they're happy doing the more serious things or doing the things that other people might determine as boring, but they like to know that they've created a system and that they can follow that system and follow the rules that they've made. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's funny because on the contrast of that story that you shared, Sierra, my dad and my sister are both Capricorn Mercuries and I specifically think about grocery shopping with my father or even my sister exact same way. They would like the list, but my father absolutely doesn't want to look through the options. He's like, just write down the very specific thing you want. And we're going into the grocery store (laughs) and we're getting that and we're leaving. And we're only going to be there for five minutes to get a full cart of groceries. End of story. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. We we need to have, we need to dive into that in a ramble because my Capricorn Mercury dad, like grocery shopping is like the light of his life. Like, that's just like, he wants the list. He writes the list. He loves the list. And he wants to then explore everything in every aisle. We got to get into that. (laughs) Oh yeah. Because my father, hundred percent, always the list. It was written before decided, but you follow the goddamn list and just the list. (laughs) Those two brands don't care. Give me the cheapest one. (laughs) Yeah. It's like a Mercury and Capricorn person susceptible to change or like adaptable. Mm. I feel like that could depend on everything else going on because (laughs) that's, you know, like I've got like your dad's an Aquarius, right? Yeah. With a Scorpio moon. So very fixed. Yeah. Mm. And my dad's a a Capricorn with a Libra moon. So it's um, not the same. Yeah. I don't know if we could talk about like adaptability specifically to the Mercury sign because Mercury in general is like very fluid so it's hard to put it just on that mercury sign i think that capricorn is if we're talking about adaptability and like receptability i think they're very receptible for the best possible outcome whatever Mm. they believe is the best possible outcome might change depending on their sun and moon and blah 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 blah. Mm. um i think that mercury is a great place to look at for uh yeah like you said receptive like how receptive is somebody going to be, but also like how quickly are they going to change their mind? How go or like how impressionable are they? How, um, how willing to change the way that they frame like their perspective are they where, and so like Mercury and Capricorn, because they have, they can tend to have like a black and white way of seeing things or a factual way of seeing things, even like in an emotional setting. I don't know that I would peg them as very adaptable. Yeah. I think they want success no matter what. Mm-hmm. Oh. Which I think adaptability can come from that. If you mm. want to have the ultimate success, I'm thinking 10th house specifically, then you're going to adapt and flex and move in the way that needs to. Yeah. That's that's a great point because going back to like what uh Sierra had said about the about her uh husband and father kind of like making these plans for the trip like they do what they know needs to be done right Mm -hmm. like without them doing it they are like it's not going to get done and that responsibility they're going to they're going to be the ones to take on the responsibility whether it's actually doing it who knows like maybe they have mars and in something totally non-committal but with mercury and capricorn they always have the laundry list of responsibilities and duties that need to be done Uh, maybe they'd be really good at delegating or maybe they feel like it's on them or Maybe they also want it to be on them. I, I yes. And I feel like uh, just going back to something we talk about on um, almost every episode, just, I feel like it's so important knowing someone's mercury because it can shift so much for you specifically me knowing my dad is a mercury and Capricorn. So many things I need him to do for me, like, uh, paper wise in Canada. Cause I don't live in Canada anymore. And I feel so guilty always asking him to do these things, but he's just like, give me the freaking thing. I will go do it. And he's happy Mm. to do it. And just like, it's communicated very coldly sometimes. Like, no, tell me the exact thing you want me to do and I'll go do it. And I'm like, oh my God, he's mad Yeah, it's the no smile for me, man. (laughs) (laughs) Could you just smile so I know you're like, okay, doing it. You're (laughs) so right. 
You're so right. Cause Martha, I'm in the exact same situation. My dad being the Capricorn Mercury living overseas. And he's like the, like I'm handling whatever your American stuff that I have to do. And he mm-hmm. is happy to do it. And so I wonder like, and I'd love to have some feedback from the Capricorn Mercury's or, you know, Capricorn in the 10th listening. If, um, if maybe acts of service is something that's important mm-hmm. to you, because that's something where I'm thinking of my husband too, with like, <laughs> he's got a lot more of the, you know, <laughs> he's a Gemini Mars, not a Capricorn Mars, like my dad, like he's, you know, definitely not the yeah. committing to all of the things in the same yeah, way. I had Mars and Gemini in mind when I yeah. said that, but then I didn't <laughs> yeah. want to call anyone out. Yeah. Well, we can call you out, Guillaume. Here you are. But like, it's, um, you know, but my dad is very like happy to talk about it and happy to do it. He might not show that happiness, but the acts of service for both him mm. and my husband are huge because I think there is that like, so a Capricorn energy is so, um, I'm fucking capable like either I'm striving to be, or I feel like I am. And I feel like that, um, that acts of service is something that how they show love because they're like, I thought through the best way in order to like make this happen. And also how they receive love as well. You thought of something that could make my life easier and facilitate what my goals are, you know? Can we make this a thing? Every episode we talk about love languages for the Mercury (laughs) side. I never would have thought of Mercury for love (laughs) language, but I feel it with this one a lot. Hmm. I just want to also say, I would also put words of affirmation on a Capricorn Mercury, Hmm. which sounds crazy, but I feel like they just tell you um, exactly how, what they see your worth is. Hmm. Yeah, but I think that's why I wouldn't put words of affirmation on them because it's not about painting pretty words. It's about telling the fact of it. I guess it depends on how you receive it. I personally love that truth. Like you're so good at this or you, but, but, but like, I want that just like direct, come on, give it to me how it is. But if you don't like that, I guess it wouldn't be received that way, but I feel like they're good at telling you exactly how you feel. So if they're close to you and they love you positive, if not, I'm not sure. I think the reason that I haven't had the same experience is because when a Capricorn Mercury compliments me, it's not, it's almost like they actively are not trying to make me feel good. Like they, like, they're just like, yeah, well, you're good at this. So blah, blah, blah. And it's like, wait, 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 did you just say something nice to me? Like, can we, can we lean in on that? You You know, maybe that's especially with like moon being like, (laughs) I don't want to feel too much. Just give me the compliment and I'll yeah. do it. <laughs> Just give me the fact of it. Yeah. <laughs> and in the quiet, I'll feel really good about it. Yeah. I, maybe it's not so much as a love language as just like when a Capricorn Mercury does give you a compliment, you know, they're not fluffing it up. Like there's mm. no, they don't benefit from telling you anything but the their true what's true to them in that moment you know like they're not there there's no way for them to be like oh no you're really good at like doing this analyzing see look at all this stuff you've done it's like no you're really good at computer analyzing we're putting you on that project and you're like wow <laughs> now this is I your would, job yeah no but like <laughs> I wouldn't have been put on that project if they didn't think I genuinely was good at that so I feel like there's yeah. um a, a, a compliment that comes with being told something factually nice from from a mm. Capricorn Mercury in that way. Like there's no there's they don't fluff it up, which can be a little bit cold. But because they don't fluff it up, you know that they wouldn't be saying that unless they meant it. Yeah. Yeah. Capricorn Mercury can see potential in other people like they see Ooh. people and they see how they can be put to work or how they can be utilized. Yeah. I see them very much as a good teacher. Yeah. Mm. My father was taught Louis how to lay floor and he was just like, I know he's good at that. So I'm going to put trust in him. And I, so many times, so often teachers don't want to let their student actually do it, but I I feel like the Capricorn sees it in them. Mm -hmm. I totally see that with my dad. It's like, Mm -hmm. I want to share this knowledge with you and I'm going to put the trust that my directions are good enough that you can follow along and, uh, And it's a trust in themselves as to giving the direction and a trust in other people. Like he, you know, I'm thinking of my dad with like, just like construction stuff, like the laying floor, like you said, you know, whenever he's teaching me a skill, whenever he's teaching one of my family members a skill, it's like, I wouldn't be teaching this to you if I didn't think you could do it. And I have the confidence in my, uh, like, I don't know, my transferring of knowledge 
that you can accomplish it. I just had such a moment too with, I feel like they are good teachers because they put value on passing skills down, which is yes, like, like what, Capricorn yeah. archetypal. Ooh. Yeah. Like legacy. legacy. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wait, so I feel me, like now if me, I me. don't mention it, what? Is your mama Capricorn Mercury? Okay. I was literally about to say, I feel like if I don't mention this, that I'm leaving her out. My mom is okay. also a Capricorn okay. Mercury and she is a teacher. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was like, is your so mom So shout out. Hey mom, she's <laughs> probably listening to this. So <laughs> I was like, okay, they both mentioned their parents. I should probably bring up my mother as well. So this is funny too, because all of our Capricorn Mercury parents or like Capricorn heavy placement parents raised like air uh, fire sign people. And I feel like mm. it's that confidence that you just said, uh, Sierra, that like confidence in self teaching instills yeah. that confidence in the student mm. or the kid or whatever. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've got that, like, I mean, we all have that Capricorn Mercury parent to our fire Mercury selves where we have, you know, um, we've, I mean, fire Mercury has a confidence to it. And because fire Mercury's have a confidence, I mean, like totally generalizing, there's other factors that come in, but I would say in general, fire gives confidence and that Capricorn (laughs) looks for confidence when they're delegating a task. And, and so in a way, even though we wouldn't say Capricorn, you know, that like cardinal, uh, earth energy, is it necessarily going to be compatible, comparable with, you know, a fiery mercury depends, but there is that, um, you know, it, it, it they balance see- each other out. Yeah. They balance each other out. That's exactly. And also I was going to say that in, I'll get into more of the details, like when I give some details from astrology, and cosmic science, by Isabel and Hickey, but one of, um, the thoughts from that book, uh, was that they said in, Capricorn Mercury that they make great teachers and diplomats if they don't overdo the intolerance of stir and sternness. Mm -hmm. So it's like that I can totally see great teacher, but having a, having a heavy Capricorn placement self and parents, um, it's like a not tolerating bullshit and there's bullshit in teaching, like coming from the elementary teacher here, like there's bullshit in teaching and it's really frustrating sometimes. And so I feel like they are so capable, but I almost feel like it would be more, maybe, maybe not elementary school, maybe not like maybe something more like higher education where it's like, you chose to be here. And if you're not going to follow what I say, then I'm done with you because you have to have more patience and understanding when it comes to certain types of learners. But I feel like for a certain type of subject area, a certain type of kid, certain type of, you know, student, they could be like just an amazing teacher. Mm-hmm. My right. brain has so much happening inside of it. <laughs> it's like overdrive. <laughs> and the whole time you were talking, I had so much happening in there that I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, so I'm just like, boom, in my head. <laughs> I feel like the past is a very important thing for uh, Capricorn Mercury and Mercury in the 10th as well, because I feel like they like to know how things have come to be in the present. And I feel like if we're thinking about like subjects in school, I think they, that uh, it would be very like susceptible to enjoying a history class to know how we got here and like what system brought us here sort of thing. Uh, and then, you know, thinking about like other Capricorn themes, authority, hierarchy. I feel like when a Capricorn Mercury walks into a room, they're sort of like creating the hierarchy of the people around and like, okay, who do I... Who do I fit myself into? Like, what is my role in this system or in this group of people here? I I really like that. And I was thinking back, you know, to both my dad and husband, where I feel like they are both people who so value um, like the what I've done to get to the place where I am now in different ways, where, you know, um, in France, you really have to follow a certain um follow certain steps in order to have the job that you have. And because um, like, you know, my Aquarius husband has taken an unconventional path. I feel like sometimes he can see that as being lesser because it's not the, con- like he's the unconventional him Aquarius, but with that Capricorn Mercury of like, will people value my authority in the same way, even if I have the same knowledge, but because I didn't do the steps that are seen as the way to do things, because there is a mm. conventionality to Capricorn. And then my dad, being someone who was like, I'm not the best student 
in these categories. So what I remember him telling me in such a proud way being like, I took teachers in college. I knew I wasn't that smart and not that smart, but like, I knew I wasn't that capable in certain classes. So I would go around and make sure that I would get the best teachers for each of those areas. And that's how I was successful in classes because I knew that I needed to have that teacher in order for me to be successful in that class and end up with the degree that I want. And so I feel like there's, and you know, and I, um, based on my experience, I, I feel like there are people who are really good at beefing up their resume too, of like, because they do appreciate that, um, I don't know the, the authority and the hierarchy, like you were saying, Mimi. And, and I think that that's a little bit like, you know, we'll talk a little bit later about, you know, Capricorn with Capricorn Mercury versus, you know, Sag versus Aquarius, but that comes to play differently too. Cause I see that as being a value for information and authority, um, and capable, like being capable, but, um, in different ways from the different sun signs. I found the word I've been looking for, for this whole gad damn podcast opportunist <laughs> is the word I've been wanting to say yeah they yeah. are opportunists like what you just said your dad took teachers mm -hmm. he chose his classes on teachers my father also said he had a very hard time in school so guess what he did he went to teachers college for shop work because he knew he was good at his hands and he became a teacher teaching shop which is not even a thing anymore uh, in 2023. Mm. But that was for the young <laughs> kids here when you went into a class and you used a drill and made shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I took shop class, yeah. He saw that opportunity and like got into his career way younger than anyone else in teaching because he was the only one in like Nova Scotia that was able to teach that. So they mm. gra grabbed him on the school board so quick. Anyways, I, I love, I love the opportunist. Yes. Because it goes, yeah. it goes along with the, you know, oh, this is the way that France does this. Well, I don't like that way. I want all that knowledge, but I'm going to come up with a way of getting it all myself so that I'm actually more accredited than these people, but, um, did it, but you know, didn't take the conventional path. I feel like that's where your dad's Aquarius also comes in, but the opportunist part of it is, you know, yeah. Playing to your own strengths and, mm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that and playing everyone around you to their own strength too. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say, I feel like this would be a wonderful placement for like a talent agent. And like you Ooh. see talent, you see that potential, you see the opportunities and other people, and then you do what you can to bring them to the top. I also think though that like Mercury and Capricorn, because Capricorn has an ego, it's cardinal, it's a leader, it wants to lead. Uh that it can um you know, if it's not in like an evolved state or it's not feeling very confident in itself, it's kind of a placement that might tear other people down as well. In what way? In that they might fear that somebody else's success means their okay. detriment. Okay. Yes. I could also see in the same way that we said that if you get a compliment or the same way that I said, if you get a compliment from that Capricorn Mercury, like it's very, I feel like it's, you know, they mean it. I think that they mm -hmm. could also very easily use that same strength in that more negative way of being like, well, you don't know how to blah, blah, blah fact, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, exactly. oh, you know, it's, oh yeah. 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 We all have a, uh, we all have the flip sides of things. Mm hmm. Also look at where your Saturn is in your chart. We say this every Mercury episode, whatever the ruling planet of your Mercury sign. So if Mercury's in Capricorn, the ruling planet of that is Saturn. So look at where Saturn is in your chart to also paint a picture of how your mind works, how you're processing things, how you like to communicate what's important to you on a more logical level. Oh, so interesting. But I shall go into uh, a little bit of astrology, cosmic science to keep on that trend. So this is our book buddy by Isabel M. Hickey. So a few thoughts on um, Capricorn Mercury, good concentrative power. And I feel like that goes along with what we said, like they, they want to get it done. They want to be successful. So they've got to put in the concentration, uh, dignity and earnestness feel like we can flip mm. that on both sides. You know, I feel like there's a potential for that. Absolutely. Um, I need to look at earnestness. Cause I always think I always paint like earnest with a little flavor of humility, which I wouldn't really put on Capricorn. Oh, and I always paint it with like sincerity. Mm, yeah. And so it's somewhere in between those waters. <laughs> 
Um, and then good memory and attention to detail. And I think that that like has a lot of earth sign, you know, just earth element, um, you know, going on there with good memory and attention to detail. T and this is quote tendency to lack humor and can be heavy because of it. And I mm. think that that goes exactly along with what we were just saying. Like, we don't have time for humor. We, we have time for success. Um, also, I also think their sense of humor is just like dry or like their delivery can be dry depending <laughs> yes. on other placements. Like I think about, um, my mom who has a lot of other sad placements and her humor, Lilu shaking her humor is so silly, you know, like she's all about like goofy laughing out loud and stuff like yeah. that. Like she's not a very serious humored person. She likes to just enjoy and laugh. That's, and that's my dad too. And our, our, my dad, your mom are like born a couple days apart and, um, and he's got Sag Venus. And so it's like mm. this, you know, he's got that silly, like he's the most classic dad joke person there is. Mm. But with the, I mean, with that Capricorn Mercury delivery as well. Um, uh, this I wanted to discuss because I thought yes and no here, like can be bores due to their lack of empathy. And I wouldn't ever want to be like, oh, you're a Capricorn Mercury. You don't have empathy. I would never put that out there. But lack of empathy, I maybe I'm thinking like just from the people that I know, what do we think about like the empathy coming into play with a Capricorn Mercury? I have a hard time with separating empathy and like with like in the mercury sign because the people who i know with capricorn mercury are heavy water heavy sensitive mm. people okay so they have a lot of empathy but i do see like seeing logic like okay i understand you have this shitty situation yeah. but at the same time you need to show up for this or show up in this amount of way um i feel like my father was very like fair with yeah. his empathy yeah I don't know there's something there with like I I can see that with both my dad and my husband it's not like I don't care about your feelings but also your feelings um are not being calculated in this equation for yeah. this because it's like feelings aren't meant to be part of this equation so I'm not acknowledging I'm not saying you don't have them but I'm saying we're not calculating them in here because mm. they're not a factor for this and I feel like that's like I feel like we can't just say you're not empathetic if you're a Capricorn Mercury but I feel like in the way that things get calculated it's like well for the most logical and successful outcome we need to put those things aside and then yeah and I feel like some of us, like I'm someone who calculates feelings into the logic because you have to account for them. But that's like me and my Mercury and my 12th house and my all the things, you know. But um, I feel like that's that was, I don't know, for that empathy factor, maybe it's more of the we're putting them aside to get the most successful. Outcome. I like this topic because there are only three sun placements for a Capricorn Mercury. So I like the topic for the Mercury placement. I think that any of the signs that uh, the sun can be in. So Sagittarius, Capricorn, and Aquarius all sort of have the potential to be less empathetic. They yeah. all sort of have the potential to separate themselves from, because I, none of them are water signs, right? Like all, yeah. all of these guys are just like, and Sagittarius is about a bigger perspective, seeing things bigger picture, more philosophical. It's not about accounting emotion into it. Aquarius is about disconnection and separating from, again, the emotion or the water yeah. bearer. Um, so I, I actually would say that I, I can 100% see lack of empathy for, uh, you know, Mercury and Capricorn. But that's to say that, you know, not every Mercury Capricorn is going to be apathetic. What's yeah, I think it's funny, too, because we're all different Mercury signs. And we're like, um, I don't want to say you guys aren't empathetic. Because we can't separate the situation of us being like we, the Capricorn, it's like, I can say that about them because I'm just talking about their goddamn Mercury sign. But <laughs> we're all sitting here like, but we're not trying to call you guys out. You're still good people. Like we're not separate. But you're right. A Capricorn would <laughs> just separate it out and call it like it is in that way. A Capricorn yeah. Just mean. like, at, we're not being, we're not being mean to you. It's just the way it is. Yeah. I feel like we're kind of blending Capricorn truth telling with like Sagittarius truth telling where Sag will just tell the truth because it wants 
the truth to be out there, but Capricorn will tell the truth when it benefits them or Mm -hmm. because Capricorn hides things too. It's not like it just like bears it all out. It does what needs to be done for success or what need, you know, what makes sense for it to be done. Capricorn's not known as the truth teller. And honestly, like if you think about the archetype of a CEO, like that CEO isn't going to be very honest. No. Yeah. No, just you're, telling you're it so like right. it is for the Capricorn Mercury. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're no, you're right though, because it's a totally different type of truth or direct or honest um, from that Sagittarius energy. Also, from the um, you know the the two sides that are on like on either side of Capricorn, you have like two really really independent. Um, you know, you've got uh, Aquarius and you've got Sagittarius, like freedom mm-hmm. and independent, appreciating mm-hmm. signs, and then you have Capricorn, who's like very much um goal oriented which and very much like that ego like you said but also i think there's more of an understanding of like like you like made the perfect like analogy of like that uh talent seeker like i can see where your strengths are and i can use that to help me and Mm -hmm. yeah pointing out those like truths in other people because it's like oh you're really good at this and you being really good at this could really help me achieve what i need to achieve that gets me excited for our guest because she has Leo and Capricorn placements. So like she is yeah. her own talent agent. <laughs> yes. yes. I have another example too, of like the way they can like separate empathy from things in the situation of like a boss needs to fire someone if they're not doing their job right. Yes. Regardless of that person's situation, because of the best of the business, highest good of the business or their yes. own, uh, end game success too yes you're so no, right. compartmentalizing Basic. circle and yeah. back man compartmentalizing yeah it's a capricorn yeah. game it is yeah, yeah that's like the perfect word i feel like we should just say compartmentalize not like a lack of empathy just like know when to have the empathy mm. yeah or know when it's a factor yeah yeah i also from um a cosmic science we have um them being down to earth I mean, they're an earth sign. I feel like we got to say that Classic. too. <laughs> um, and I loved this and it felt so Capricorn to me, old head on young shoulders. I love that <clears throat> little phrasing just for pretty much all Capricorn placements. I love that for, but I really like that because it's old head, like, you know, head, like Mercury, like all the thoughts and processing information mm. on young shoulders. I just, I really like that where, you know, yeah. I feel like evolved Capricorn Mercury is like the wise beyond your years. And like, I see how things, I mean, I'm thinking about like my dad, like as like a teenager, like side business hustling, like in like, why do you know this stuff? Who'd you learn this from? And it's like opportunist, like, you know, just like that. Um, I have a way of seeing the way the world works in that way. And, um, it's going to benefit me so I can get my Mustang car, you know, like he still was like a teenager, like wanting a car, but it was like, then that like old soul, like, but like old head on young shoulders type of energy for that Capricorn Mercury. And I don't know, that just fit. That just fit. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of like, I mean, there's a positive and a negative connotation to being an opportunist, you know, and it's almost like, the options are a making a really quick buck regardless of how you get there or b knowing the wisdom of how that quick buck isn't actually going to solve your you know your unhappiness mm, yep i i don't know why this is the second time that uh ryan his name is ryan from the office has come to mind he has got to be a mercury and capricorn that's it uh, i do not know who that is but someone does I'm sure that many people listening do Martha's like I'm not the only one who doesn't get the reference from us now. I have seen kidding. the office. That's like the worst part of it. He's it. like the young dude who started off as an intern and then became like the CEO of the company or something. And he was like trying to bring technology to the fucking paper company. Anyway, okay, so he's the Aquarius shame. with the Capricorn. Mercury. Yeah, he's an Aquarius <laughs> with Capricorn Mercury, hundred percent. We're putting shame to the office because it's so fucking popular, and we're just it's like. Can't even support me, me through this, but all of our <laughs> listeners will <Please> support me. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll try to um, zoom through the rest of these. We have so a tendency towards moodiness and sulking. I feel like that's from other people's perspectives. Yeah, it's the same thing as like I just told Capricorn Mercury's they need to smile more. So like blah to me, but also those Capricorn Mercury's don't have to smile more. They are happy being serious. 
They don't yeah. need to show everybody else that like they can be other people's version of happy. So we might see them as moody. And that's mm-hmm. where it's like so helpful to know other people's yes. Mercury sign, you know, yes. like maybe you have a Mercury in Capricorn or a Mercury in the 10th house close friend or, you know, your parent or something. And you always think that they are speaking to you in a very serious manner or, you know, they're backhanded compliments. I kind of feel like Mercury and Capricorn is really good at backhanded compliments, yeah. but like, no, that that's just their way of communicating and that they're not meaning to. It's just, they think it's more profitable to communicate in a direct way. It's more efficient. Yeah. That's so, and then we had got like, you they're know, not wrong. <laughs> they're not wrong. <laughs> it is efficient. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's also such a good point, Mimi, that you said like, that's how we can see it. Like moodiness and sulking, because it's, you know, we are perceiving that. And I mean, I, my Sagittarius ass, who's like, always like your joy and sunshine over here is like, why aren't you happy? And it's like, because I'm a Capricorn Mercury and I don't need to be like, you're a Sagittarius, like, or I am like, happy. I just don't have to slap it on my face. Yes. Yeah. This is really humbling. And like, I, yeah. <laughs> Your Mercury and Leo is like, everyone should be smiling all the time. I, I, you, do you know how many times in my life I thought my dad was just like not happy, but he's just mm-hmm. a very serious person. And now I'm mm-hmm. like, shit. Yeah. Not everyone's you, Martha. <sighs> and like your little Leo self is like, but don't they wish they were? Like, yeah, <laughs> sucks for them. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Okay, well, this kind of goes into another thing here that I'm going to skip one because it says, uh, Isabel Hickey wrote, need to cultivate faith and optimism. So, well, that that's a question. Like, do they? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think that, um, I mean, of course, this is me being like Sagittarius bias, but I'm also half Capricorn here. Like, I think that faith and optimism, when we... <laughs> you know, include them in the equation for success, like that it does make it a more like enjoyable and successful experience. So I feel like when Capricorn Mercury does, you know, include a little bit more of that lighthearted energy into their plan, I think it has the potential of being even, you know, more expansive and successful. And I feel like that's someone like my dad has realized that because he like had much more of that, you know, moody, and, and kind of like guarded Capricorn Mercury when I was younger. And now he's like, you know, he really is like law of attraction and really includes like the sunshine part of, you know, that, you know, that optimism and the amount that his business has expanded and touched others and like evolved into something much more positive than what it was. I do think that that's something that when they're factored into that Capricorn equation can bring more success there. No, I totally agree. I think that you know, if you just lean into the strengths of your, like, you know, one sign, then you're missing out on so much of, you know, the rest of the experience that is being a human being. And like, just because your strength is this Capricorn placement doesn't mean that you can't look elsewhere to kind of find that balance. And that'll be interesting to talk to our guest who is a Sagittarius with a Capricorn Mercury, because, you know, we'll see how that like naturally optimistic tendency that a Sagittarius has with that combination of that Capricorn Mercury. So that'll be cool. Um, Mm -hmm. And then the last thing from uh, Isabel Hickey was that um, fear can be strong where material things are concerned for Capricorn Mercury's. And Mm -hmm. just from my personal experiences with Capricorn Mercury's, I would say heck yes to that, that um, where fear can take over is when material things, money, I mean, Capricorn is a very money centric sign and processing information when it comes to like, I also, I mean, you know, I would say having a good money brain or not even having a good one, having a money brain, just like having Mm -hmm. a thinking that way. It's on the mind. It's on the mind. Exactly money on my mind yeah this can go two ways i think really great with money or kind of bad with money yeah Yeah, i mean it depends again like where's your saturn is it exalted in libra maybe you have a great way great outlook on money and you're very good at balancing your checkbook is it unhappy in aries like maybe you're constantly impulsively buying things and don't have Mm -hmm. a strong sense of where like where your banking you know should be yeah i think it's just a theme that will that will be uh, in their lives, not necessarily good or bad for sure. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, I guess my, like, after I was writing these notes, my little thoughts was just that um, these Capricorn Mercuries are like communicating with a goal in mind. 
when they're talking, when they're, I don't know, it just seems like, oh, when I'm talking to someone, especially if they're not as extroverted, let's say, it feels like when I have a goal in mind, that's when I am going to come out and have more conversation, more thoughts, more, um, I don't know, interaction in that way. And also I was thinking about like Capricorn Mercury's being like, why am I learning this? What can I do with this information when I have it? Like if I'm going to take classes, if I'm going to go to school, if I'm going to read a book, if I'm going to, uh, go to this conference, if I'm going to go to this social gathering, um, what can I do with this information? Because it has that kind mm. of Capricorn, I don't know, profitableness, yeah, maybe opportunistic to it. again. Yeah. And, and then from um, Alice Sparkly Cat, I really want to know your guys' thoughts because I was very surprised by a lot of her thoughts here. So we always share Alice Sparkly Cat's little thoughts. Thank you, Alice Sparkly Cat. Um, and here we the go K. with Sparkly Cat with a K. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so for Capricorn Mercury, rebellious, unencumbered, and entertaining. People with Capricorn as their Mercury placement are commonly described as straightforward, methodical, and strategic. I found this to be far from the case. Instead, Capricorn Mercury is one of the more out there Mercuries. After all, a lot of people with Mercury and Capricorn have Sagittarius or Aquarius suns. That's part one. Like what, what are our thoughts there? What is unencumbered? Like not loaded down. Like uninhibited almost? Yeah. Like, like un- um, not contained. <laughs> I Part of me not. wonders if she's like painted a different version because maybe where her placements are, I'm not sure. Uh, entertaining depends on your humor. Thing. Yeah. Depends on your humor. I love yeah. a dry humor. So yes, when a Capricorn is choosing or a Capricorn Mercury is choosing to entertain, I'm going to be entertained because I find that hilarious. Yeah. But, but I don't think they often choose to entertain. I think their humor is just kind of things that come out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's maybe not like, it depends on if it's intentional or not. Yeah. Yeah. And rebellious, I can see, even though that's not a word for Capricorn, I can see rebellious for that because they're going to do what's best for them and Mm -hmm. for, you know, whoever their loyalties are with. And sometimes that means rebelling against what has been set in place for them before. Although I think they have a deep respect for what has been set in place for them. They have a deep respect for the system and they try and play that game because they know that's what's worked in the past. Yeah. It sounds like she has kind of painted this Mercury and Capricorn placement as solely a Sagittarius or Aquarius sun. Because in those cases, sure. Yeah. It just sounds like an Aquarius sun to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I was very, I was very, um, I don't know, like surprise. There we go. Reading this. So I'll Mm -hmm. continue from her. Um, She says Capricorn is a sign dedicated to breaking open patterns. Mercury and Capricorn likes to startle. They like to do things that make them feel like they're a bit of an outlaw. Aquarius Mercury works the same way, but Aquarius Mercury doesn't do things to get a reaction as much as Capricorn Mercury. Capricorn Mercury will sell all of their belongings, rent a place by the river and eagerly await your reaction. That's a hard no from me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I'm, I don't think this is impossible, but I certainly don't think this is the archetype. Do you know no, what I mean? Of course it's not impossible, but it's yeah. just, yeah. It's when you're thinking of an archetype, this kind of sounds like, and you know, I have respect for Al Sparkly Cat. We, oh yeah. But this sounds like somebody who knows a Capricorn Mercury that's like this. Yeah. And has kind of painted that as all Capricorn Mercuries. It sounds like my father who was an Aquarius with a Capricorn Mercury Mm, if I I was writing about a Capricorn Mercury I would have written this because it's my dad but I just think it's the Aquarius yeah I'm yeah I'm genuinely curious to hear kind of how she got there like that's something I always love to hear from astrologers is like oh tell me how you got to this description of the sign because as soon as you give me more of that that sort of core motivation or that core kind of understanding I'm going to be able to see where you're coming from Well, you see that. Yeah, I agree. This is why I love astrology, because this description would do what it's supposed to do, what astrology is supposed to do for someone who is an Aquarius sun with a Capricorn Mercury. They would read this and feel so seen. And I love that about astrology. What she's writing is not incorrect in any Mm -hmm. way, but I don't think it's very specific towards like just Capricorn Mercury no yeah. Yeah. involved yeah because yeah. 
the last piece here, what that she said is they're rule breakers and want you to know it. They get most excited when people break rules together, separate from regular society to form a commune. And most of all, when they feel they are allowed to chase freedom. So I definitely feel like she gave us a really great way that Capricorn Mercury can show up for Aquarius and Sagittarius. But um, as far as Capricorn Mercury in general, I... I don't know that. I mean, I would, I wouldn't by default describe it as rebellious, unencumbered and entertaining. I think like it depends Mimi, like you said, who is receiving the information from a Capricorn Mercury and what all the other, um, the other factors going on in that person's chart, you know? I would think a Capricorn Mercury would be, feel sad at first about like breaking the tradition of the Mm -hmm. rules of what something was. Yeah. And I think that respect there, like you said, Mimi, is so true because I mean, my dad, like the way that he has like created his whole business and, and, you know, he's like a Capricorn, uh, Mars, Capricorn sun, Capricorn Mercury, like the way he plays the stock market, all these things. And he's in Aquarius rising. So he's got like this, like really unconventional way of seeing things and then plays the Capricorn games with it. And so it's like the respect of, I know how the system works and I know it so well that I could almost like, um, bend or not make my own rules parallel to them while still following them. Like, I think there is such a, um, I don't know, respect and understanding of the the way things function as they have. Hmm. I feel like she's playing into the independence factor that all three of these signs do have in common, like Sagittarius, Capricorn and Aquarius do have independence in common. But I think that Capricorn's independence is very different from Sag and Aquarius, where Sag and Aquarius are seeing things from a different perspective. Capricorn is in the perspective. Capricorn is seeing it from the ground level and they're trying and not trying, but they are fitting into the system. They're, you know, Capricorn is known for rule following and for rule setting. It's not by archetype a rule breaker, but they're trying to seek independence in how well they followed the rules and mm. how successful they got through the system and through following those rules. Yeah. They cared now as hell. They, yeah, they be working exactly. their asses off. Yeah. 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 And so it's they are complacent. independent. Yeah. But yeah, not complacent. Yeah. But I definitely wouldn't think that I mean you could see rebellious as being like, you know, not breaking because you're right they're rule followers but it's not necessarily breaking the rules but like look at how i use the rules to my advantage in my way Mm -hmm. you know but i still wouldn't consider that being rebellious i would think of being that as like innovative you know yeah 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 i mean something we didn't use for capricorn is they're so resourceful they're incredibly resourceful so they use what's around them and that's something i meant to say when we talked about like fear around material things like that's because material things or are resources for them or not even material things, but they find resources and whatever they, you know, whatever they can. Going back to that opportunist comment too, yep. you know, mm. because of the resources around them, they are very resourceful. They'll figure out a way to like within the parameters of the rules that exist, make something really cool and really, um, and something that functions well. And they'll, because they have that like success on the brain, It's like, we're gonna, you know, we will figure a way to make it work and make it work really well. And that's where the innovation comes from more than the rebellion. Yeah, personally. So, and I mean, I don't think we necessarily need to get into the, the three different types of Mercury's for our three different sun signs with Mercury's because we kind of talked about it the whole episode. Yeah, we did. But um, Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're new here, um, just the reason why we talk about you know, both Capricorn, Sagittarius and Aquarius in this episode is because Mercury can only ever be in the sign that the sun is in the sign before or the sign after. So Mm -hmm. if you are a Capricorn Mercury, you are either a Capricorn, a Sag or an Aquarius. And, um, but I think it's interesting that each of our parental examples are the different ones. Like I have, oh no, 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 never mind. Your dad and my mom are both Capricorn sons. I always think of my mom as a Sagittarius. She's got that Sag rising, but no. And Sag, yeah, so much Sag. She's all Sag, Earthang. Yeah. <laughs> Earthang. <laughs> but you know, it's funny because uh, Mimi, did your mom have Aquarius placements? Uh, she, yeah, like one or two, nothing major. Okay, because I mean, all of our parents have all three. My dad's a Sag rising, Aquarius sun, Mercury and Capricorn. Sierra, your dad's Cap sun, Cap Merc, 
Aquarius rising. Yeah. And he has Sagittarius yeah. stuff, right? Yeah, he does. Yeah. Like they all have all three. That's yeah. So I mean, my mom's Aquarius is uh, Chiron, so it's much more internal. Like, okay. you know, we're not going to see that in her, but. But she quirky. She quirky. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, mom. If you're listening. <laughs> well, <Hi> dad. <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well i kind of love this though that we've got like we all have really prominent capricorn mercury influences and then we're these fire mercuries that are also like we all have boss energy because we like pr- are constantly perceiving information given to us by boss mercury energy you know mm. so it's um yeah I mean, I'm thinking about like, I have my moon in the 10th house in whole sign in the whole sign system. And like, I feel similarly that I imagine a mercury in the 10th house would feel that my emotions are fact. They just, they are fact. How I feel is a fact. Uh, Not like that my opinion is a fact, but just like my emotion, it's a fact, it's valid. And similar, I would think to a mercury in the 10th house where like this logic is a fact. And that's where I think that receptivity that we were talking about earlier, like adaptability might be harder to like get past or to penetrate because Mm. to them, their logic, their perspective, how they see things is just a cold, hard truth. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. And, and it's not even like a matter of being adaptable. It's like, there's nothing to adapt to because this is Mm -hmm. how it is. It's different from fixed in a way because, um, Mm. It's like you can give another perspective, but I don't know that that fact thing is so, so, so true. So true for yeah. that 10th house, that Capricorn. Um, I don't know. Things have already been factored in like they have they have put in all of the factors into making that plan and that, you know, that goal, that plan of attack. Um, so I guess it kind of just depends on the other placements as to what gets factored in. You know, if you are a Capricorn, Capricorn Mercury, um, maybe there that that optimism and, you know, uh, individuality, other factors aren't as factored in there. Maybe if you're an Aquarius, you know, we have that, like Alice Barclay Cat was saying, you know, just um, piecing out and renting a place by the river and waiting for a reaction because they want to do something different. And like I took into account all the factors that are going on here for me to be different and wild. So it's just kind of what that Capricorn Mercury is factoring into their calculations of things Hmm. and we'll find out some more information from our Sagittarius guest soon yeah we're back with our interviewee Anna Brooke welcome Anna hey thank you so much pleasure to be here yeah I'm so excited we had so so many people on the yeah we had so many people on the Mercury and Capricorn list but I feel like once we hit Anna I was like we've got we have to have her on because I didn't realize you were a a Capricorn Mercury but it makes so much sense now that now that I do I have to say even just in preparing for our conversation today I dove into my own astrology because I've always thought of myself as fire and water like that's what I've always been told Mm. like fire water fire because I'm Sagittarius uh, Pisces rising Leo moon but then I have an earth trine at like zero and one degrees. Yeah, like, it sneaks in there. <laughs> what is this undercover earth business? So thank you. I, I, I'm learning more about myself even as we speak. <laughs> oh, the undercover earth business. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, Anna. I remember when I met you and uh, I mean, it's on Zoom when I met you, but I was like, oh, she gives earth vibes. And then you were like, yeah. I'm a Sagittarius with a Pisces rising and a Leo moon. I was like, oh, okay. Where did I get that from? And then when I saw your chart, I'm like, hello, Grand Earth Trine. There we are. <laughs> and I also, I actually also have a kite. Um, if you draw the aspect to Chiron, um, Chiron is the, is, is part of the earth trine and it's, uh, down the, anyway, so I have a kite as well. And I'm learning so much. I was reading all about this last wow. night. So yes, a chart full of purpose. Apparently oh, love it. So thank you for sharing your top three, wondering what, um, even though I know, but what are your thoughts and feelings on astrology? 
Oh, I'm such a big fan of it. Like I, I've had a real journey with astrology in my life as somebody who, and I love to, you know, I'm going to claim the word woo. I'm just going to, I'm going to claim it and I'm going to own it. Uh, I, I, when I first came into astrology, when I was in my late teens, I was in college, I became so consumed by it that I literally wouldn't leave the house before leaving, reading my horoscope. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, thankfully I brought in a little bit of moderation as the years went by. Uh, and now I'm going to try and help out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I look at it as the weather report, as in what we are astrologically predisposed to and then where we can also exercise free will. And I love looking at, you know, again, like what's the weather report? Do I need an umbrella? Do I need galoshes? Do I need, you know, fill in the blank? Do I need to be wearing nothing but linen today? You know, that sort of, (laughs) and the, 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 I, you know, it's also kind of like this, like beautiful bottomless fractal of information, like just how much can get teased out and explored and learned in all of these different points. I mean, every single point on the Zodiac wheel has, I mean, it's just like, it's endless and it's fascinating. And if I had more time and brain power, I would absolutely dive into it way more than I have um, just to (laughs) learn all about it. I'm I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I love that. And I, I feel like that's how I see it as well as the weather report. And that's what we, when we're talking about transits and everything, we're like, what's the astrological weather for the week or, you know, for the upcoming year. And, and exactly like you can, you can, I love the combination of, you know, exercising free will versus this is like what the weather's going to be. Am I going to say, screw it. I'm not bringing an umbrella because I don't feel like it and be prepared to, you know, get drenched or, you know, am I going to like use it as law? You know, it's, it's up to my free will as interpreting Hmm. that weather. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about like having that preparation. Like this is what I, like you said, predisposed to whether that happens or not, it's up to how I react to it. It's up to the choices I make leading up and after and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's a great blend. Yeah. And getting into like the Capricorn Mercury parts of you and who you are and knowing that you have that like fire and water going on there. Do you find yourself to be a compartmentalizer with Mercury being all about how we process and learn and communicate? Do you (laughs) consider yourself to be a compartmentalizer? I'm going to say yes. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just gonna say I, I realize this is not necessarily being recorded on video, but it's yet like I, I you may have seen my face. Like, and and I, I I you know I in some ways I wish astrology had come in sooner, but I am grateful for all the therapy I received as a child, which taught me about my uh predisposition to compartmentalize. It's very mm. easy, it's very accessible. My mother's also a Capricorn. So i you know, there is definitely some some exchange and some learning there. Wow. as well but yeah oh. absolutely oh mercury has learned behavior from your parents interesting hmm. oh <laughs> we well, need to dive into that Mar- yeah, we'll sit in that no <laughs> everyone just turned their head in a different direction and looked up to the sky when <laughs> mercury is that you <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> so we can, we can attribute that like compartmentalizing to that Capricorn. I don't know. I, with all my Capricorn placements, I definitely uh, feel that, but with the mercury there, um, you know, in, in learning, in expressing, in processing. So you definitely, mm. uh, when, when we were coming up with the questions and we were thinking about compartmentalizing, we kind of brought that question up after speaking about how some people consider Capricorns as cold, like a Capricorn Mercury as cold communicators, because they take the emotion out of what they're saying to people. Do you feel like you could be described as, as a cold communicator at some times because of that compartmentalizing behavior? It's, it's definitely a default. Like when I I wrote a book that came out like on the early days of the pandemic, which is a whole other story, but, um, it was at writing the drafts of it and getting feedback. It was so much more comfortable for me to slide into a colder, more academic, more removed voice. Mm-hmm. And the feedback I kept getting is like, put some of you into this. And it, like, it was a story about my life as well as like other things, but 
the, the one of my big challenges, even now as I continue to write, is bringing in what I'm going to call in this moment more humanity into my writing, as opposed to a much more removed, like a teacher at the blackboard, like then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. Mm. And it's, um, yeah, it's again, like thinking about that in terms of Capricorn Mercury, like I never put those pieces together, but it makes so much sense because it is, it is easier. Like there's something about if I, if I feel my way, cause also my Capricorn Mercury is conjunct my midheaven. And so it's mm. also like, I recognize that there is, that there, there is life work to do here. And there is, you know, a lot will be revealed. The more I write, the older I get all of that. And I think finding a balance between like the softness and the facts is, um, it's just challenging and it, it it requires lots of revision for me, literally in the written word, but talking when, a bit about it. Yeah. <laughs> when you're receiving feedback in like that work situation, do you also compartmentalize? Like you don't get emotionally affected by that feedback? Yeah. I, when I was younger, I used to get very, very affected by it. Um, and I was a performer for a very long time. I still am a performer, but I live in the woods now and there are not a lot of stages around here. Um, the birds are watching Anna. <laughs> yes, they are. And the owls, <laughs> owls are not what they seem. Uh, the, uh, I, I, you know, I have to say there's, I, I once like it clicked. So I was like, oh, whatever I am creating is a separate consciousness from me. Like I am not it. So when I get feedback, it's not always the most comfortable. Certainly when somebody say, and I'm in a writing group with two Capricorns who I love to the moon and back. And one of them is super harsh. And I'm really grateful for her because she delivers some serious feedback, but it's also like, okay, I'm going to like surround myself in some white yes. light, maybe like a, <laughs> to put, on, to put on some gentle feather based armor. And <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> because like it, she'll, she'll come at me, but now again, like the more I've gotten used to that, it's like, it's my writing that's being critiqued. It's not me. And so that's, mm. that's made it a lot easier. That is so interesting because the separating you from it, because Capricorn has a respect for self dis regardless of what it's making or what it's doing or how it's presenting. It has just like a basic respect for self. So you can insult what I'm making. It's not an insult. It's constructive criticism. Mm. But to separate the you from the it, to be able to say you are not what you've made, but for an artist like yourself, you know, and as a Leo moon, you are what you create too. So it's sort of that dichotomy of and having to separate yourself. My moon is conjunct Mars in Leo mm -hmm. in the fifth house. Like Literally it's what you like, create. Mm -hmm. so yeah. it's, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's fascinating. This thinking about personal evolution through the framework of astrology. I mean, again, you guys are making me think about stuff that I've things I've never put together before. And it's like, it's making mm -hmm. so much sense. The more I spend time with it and certainly in conversation with you. Mm -hmm. Are you holding a mug well, right now that says Yes, I, mean, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, as you're the most Mercury in Capricorn thing, can that please be your photo for this episode? Absolutely. <laughs> please oh take a picture God. with that mug, Anna. I was just like, it's small on my screen, but does that mug say fuck it? I was staring oh, at it too. Here we oh are, Anna, That's the really Capricorn funny. Mercury. So good. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> you're just beautifully spewing words while casually holding a fucking you like, yes <laughs> wow yes <laughs> which i feel like is the most sagittarius sun capricorn mercury example <laughs> oh yes i was also thinking the pisces rising like put in all the work that capricorn wants you to do and then pisces just like let the ether take it Mm. Mm. it all it. comes to play everybody all the pieces yeah. come to play um our next question you've kind of already leaned into so i'm sort of going to replace it with something else i was curious if you um have an interest in history oh yes very much so, very much so. i mean i studied art history i have two degrees in art history as i love to say none in math so please don't ever ask me to put numbers together um, <laughs> But I, I come also, my family is very sort of history rooted. My mother, the Capricorn is like the record keeper of her family of all the ancestral, everything. And, you know, 
I am now the repository of all that for both of my parents. They're both still living, thank God. But they're as they're getting older and getting rid of stuff, like I am suddenly landing with family history in addition to other from you know, I have bookshelves full of all of my art books, you know, all of, but even then, like, yes. So anyway, very long answer, short question. Yes. I love history. Um, I love spending time with it and I love unpacking it as a way of looking for patterns, you know, through mm. history, uh, you know, even through families, through cultures, you know, it's, it's always fascinating to see the same signatures sort of coming through and repeating. That's something I'm fascinated by. Mm, yeah. Systems. Do you, is yeah. part of what you're interested in history is being able to share that one day, like the collecting of it from your family. Are you excited to share that? Or are you excited about learning it? Uh, you, yes. Yes. And yes. And yes. Um, well, I'm <laughs> actually one of what I'm working on right now is uh, it's a book about belongings and things. Uh, because when I was in my early twenties, my father uh, who I love to the ends of the earth, but is a very wounded Scorpio, uh, threw out all of my belongings. And mm. because he was ready to move out of the house, he had found a new woman, he had gotten married, he had, had started another family. So he's like, oh, nobody needs this. And so he, I showed up to quote unquote, move out of my house. And I showed up at a dumpster full of my belongings. And I went mm. into shock. I ended up leaving the country. Like it was a long story, but that experience of loss of history has sort of it it was it's sort of like a baptism by fire or like stuff mm, I guess you could say mm. but just opening up to the impermanence of things of physical things but also the deeper question being begged of what like what is value and what is valuable because like for example my wife when her father passed away she got the passport that had belonged to her grandmother, that when her father had emigrated from Palestine and she had never seen a picture of her father as a child. And she had, that was the first time she ever saw a picture of her grandmother. And it was a profoundly emotional experience, but also here was like this beautiful, again, I, and I recognize I'm hitting all the Capricorn notes here. It's like this beautiful old, <laughs> like warm historical artifact that was like rooted in my, like literally of my wife's family and blood, you know, who I had barely met and barely know to this day. And it, so it's like, even that is a counterbalance to be like, yes, it was, you know, so sad to lose all the stuff that like my grandmother made for me. And, but at the same time, like, well, what is valuable? What, where does that balance come in? And can I be in permanent grief for stuff lost when there's actually a deeper question to be asked here? And so I realize I'm, I'm going a little off piece with that question, but there's, you know, one of the things I really appreciate about Capricorn energy is the appreciate of the, the appreciation of the old. Mm -hmm. And the appreciation of tradition. And like, I used to push so hard against my mom growing up and just like, ugh, I don't want to go to, you know, fill in the blank. I don't want to do this. I don't want to dress up. I don't, blah, blah, blah. I want to just like hide under my bed and like read a book and hang out with the cats. Like, I'm not interested in any of this. But as I've gotten older, I really see the value in that as well as a communication. Uh, hello, Mercury, a communication of tradition. Mm. But like in the lived, in a lived way, not just reading it in the book, not just like cerebrally absorbed, but like to move through, to sing, to meet, to literally touch, you know, people who are like two to three generations older than me. I mean, none of them are alive anymore, but growing up very much so, very much so. My mom's family, half of it was Quaker and like immense family record and immense family like connection and tradition and all of that. And now it's, now that everyone's gone, like, I wish I knew more about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, it's an interesting dance of history, but also like value within history. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Anna, I cannot, I'm just exploding with looking at your chart and like listening to you just live your chart. It's, it's, it's wild. I mean, I... your Chiron in Taurus in the third communication of having lost all of your possessions being like a huge Wait, triggering just... moment for you. Are you? Which I, I'm looking at whole sign. I'm looking at whole sign. I was going to say, I was going to say, because typically it's, what is it? it um, in fact, Sierra, you're the one who uh, told yeah. me the, the, what's it called? The in, it's like when, when a half interception, interception. interception. Mm -hmm. in the second. Yeah. 
Yeah. I find a Pisces rising. I say this all the time, but a Pisces rising is always lives their chart so well. Mm. Like it's so well represented. And I just feel like that's like that Pisces energy is like, I'm in tune with the universe. Yes. Yeah. Is that is probably the biggest way that I am set apart from my family. Cause I'm just like, well, I'm not really feeling that. And they're like, who are you? (laughs) (laughs) Where did you come from? (laughs) Literally both of my parents have asked me that question multiple times. So (laughs) Uh, I, I love this idea that you shared about, um, I don't know. I had a really similar uh, experience as far as possessions being gone and going into a shock factor and needing to pull a Sagittarius and piece the fuck out. And, and it was a little bit different, but it was when my parents were moving and I've got a crazy Capricorn stellium and understand that like really intense attachment to objects because of what the, the memories and the, the stories that they share. And when I walked into my parents' house, when they were moving, and this is the house I grew up in, this is the house that's infused with memories. And it was like this bookshelf at the top of the stairs was gone. And I knew that that was when it was like, they were actually moving. And, and yeah, first of all, bookshelf. Hello. Like, I'm just like, I'm, (laughs) I'm not okay with that. (laughs) But nothing, um, if not consistent, (laughs) I know. Right. (laughs) <laughs> but um but I really went into shock and and like uh long story short I didn't have my car with me or else I would have peaced out but my parents were like do we need to worry about you like leaving right now I was like you would if I had my car yeah but right now I'm just going to sit in a state of shock because I can't I can't handle it and I feel like All that, that yeah it is that like I don't know because mercury is how we process information and capricorn is something that values the history the antiques the you know not just because it's something old sometimes yes it's like wow they made this better quality how beautiful is this just aesthetically lovely but also like the story that is attached with those things and that so much um i don't know it i feel like i've come to appreciate i've always liked museums but i've come to appreciate them so much as i've gotten older too because you realize that oh this is stuff collected like really important things collected. And I feel like with that processing of information, um, that's one reason why objects can become so, I don't know, like valuable to to those and Capricorn placements. With meaning. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's used with meaning. And in some cases, and I'm going to place some of this squarely on my Pisces rising, uh, is the the energetic the energetics of old objects and like the stories yeah. that can be mm-hmm. told and intuited from simply holding something. I mean, getting my father when he was, <laughs> he, again, lo- lovable wounded Scorpio, basically proverbially set fire to everything he owned after his last divorce and sent me a, literally a moving truck full of stuff, some of which I wanted. I didn't need the Stairmaster. Uh, the, <laughs> one of the things he sent me were family photos I had never seen before, including his grandmother's, so my great grandmother's photo album that she had brought over from what is now Slovakia. And Mm. I had never seen it. And like, literally the album is falling apart. I mean, it lives in a box because it's just disintegrating. The photos are fine. The album itself is falling apart. Mm. And like these tiny little photos, you know, like one and a half inch by three inches big. I mean, like it's a format I didn't even know existed. And sort of like this amazing, like collision of sentimentality, but that I didn't haven't personally experienced, but yet it literally lives in my bones. I am seeing people from whom I inherited part of my body from. And I know that's Mm. super Capricorn as well, like the bones of it all, Mm -hmm. but to, to then, and like, and then to write about it and just be like this information, I have to process it somehow. It's got to pour out of me onto paper or onto the screen. Cause it's just, it's too much for me to contain. And it's like bursting to come out. So, yeah. So a casual interest in history is what you're saying. Mm. So it's it's cash. (laughs) 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 <laughs> and I feel like, well, this is all still wrapped up in Capricorn Mercury. It feels like we're taking a hard turn here uh, for my next question of, do you consider yourself <laughs> someone who always is looking for opportunities? No, we, uh, you know, like an opportunist and uh, and seeing the the potential there and, and wanting to seize it. Yes, I, so uh, I love this question. I'm very good at recognizing I am not good at acting on it. 
at all. Ooh. I'm very good. At, I'm excellent at recognizing patterns. It's one of the reasons I literally got a, it's the only time I've ever gotten a perfect score in school in art history, because I am so visual and recognizing patterns and techniques and all of that. Like art history is the only thing that ever made sense to me, academically speaking. And so to bring it into, you know, this realm of sort of more, you know, every day. Yeah, I'm really good at recognizing opportunities for myself and for others, but I am shy or have been working, I will put this into the affirmative, I have been working on empowering myself in having more agency to take action within the opportunities. Mm. Um, That sounds very cardinal, where you have the impulse, you have the impulse but it's the follow through, right? Like that's that cardinal energy right there. Yeah. 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 The fixed follow through the fix is where the follow through is like, a, you know, thrives and, mm. and that cardinal is where the, um, the energy starts. And so you have like, you have that start and that noticing. Yeah. It's interesting because you said that you have an ability of seeing it in other people too. And that was actually our next question is that, do you feel like uh, you're able to see it in other people? And do you feel like you would be a good um, mentor? Mentor. Yeah. Oh my God. That's such a great question. Um, So yes to mentor. I mean, I love, love, love supporting others. I mean, even in my work, I like, I never call myself a coach ever. And yet I have a mm. friend who literally, we were on the phone a couple of weeks ago and he was like, when are you going to accept that you are a coach? And I was like, la, 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 fingers and ears. I don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, dude, you're a coach, like get over it. Mm-hmm. And so, and, but what I do in my work is literally supporting people to become, I'm not going to say their best self, even though that's what's coming to my mouth for whatever reason, but it's more about creating ourselves and the framework for ourselves to become the source of meeting our own needs. So we don't have to outsource them into others and deal with perpetual wounded outcomes when we sort of outsource all that. So it's like all of that completely fits in to what I've moved into now I'm, you know, in my mid forties, like as my work becomes more apparent, you know, and writing and speaking and like, that's what I'm moving towards. And it scares the living bejesus out of me. But I also know that like fear is that beautiful blinking neon sign, like, oh, this is where you need to be going. Like, go ahead Mm. here. go And so it's like, okay. Like, (laughs) but yes, I mean, to be a mentor, I feel is one of the greatest acts of service anyone um, can do, you know, it's like that beautiful Ram Dass quote, like we're just leading each other home. And if mm-hmm. I can, I have been so immensely fortunate to receive profound guidance and encouragement and support from people along, you know, not just my professional path, but my, my like personal human being healing path, which has in turn woken me up to different modalities, different therapists, different ways to heal, which in some cases I've folded into my practice that I now get to support others in doing. And that's, and I recognize Capricorn is, you know, also very much about service and like, Mm. that's huge. That's huge. And I recognize I have all of one planet in Capricorn and it's at zero degrees Mercury, but you know, it's also like, I feel, I, I, again, I feel it in my bones and there's yeah, something as you should zero degrees is the full embodiment of that sign. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> it's so funny. You brought up acts of service. Cause that was kind of a, that was a huge thing that we had brought up as well. Hmm. Yeah. My mom was really, again, my mom, the Capricorn Virgo rising Gemini, no Gemini rising Virgo moon. Um, she is the one who has taught me like the steadiness of, and the, the value of showing up for something again and again and again and again, and like consistency and follow through are my two biggest bugaboos. And like the two of the things that I have, I have the hardest time with. Um, and I, I could blame lots of things on my chart, but I'm just going to name like, that's just my journey as a human being in this body. Uh, but there is something about the value of service. I taught dance therapy for a while um, when I was living in Manhattan to senior citizens, sort of, you know, elder care centers. And I walked out of there with like light shining out of every single one of my pores and just the, the, just to show up and to be of service for other people in their bodies, to help them connect 
their imaginations in their bodies, which was a form of dance therapy I was teaching at the time. Like it was profound. It was profound. And I wish I had the compulsion to be of service because I don't, uh, I, I enjoy it, but it's not something I like rush out for. Um, But like on the flip side, my mother who did it so much now has a pin on one of her jackets saying, don't ever ask me to volunteer for anything ever again. (laughs) (laughs) She just kept saying yes, kept saying yes, kept saying yes, and completely burnt out. Mm. So I don't know how to form my my thought, but it's funny because uh, you say you don't have the compulsion to for like acts of service in that sense. But I feel like just the way you communicate is speaking to people in such a way that it is an active service. Like so many of the things that you've said today hit me in such a way that I'm like, whoa, I, you have like such beautiful words and beautiful sentences and thought processes that I feel mm. like help people and, and show up as an active service. Like the things, some of the things you said today, I've, I'm going to leave here and be like, think about that. And, and it really helped me. So oh, I think it's just yeah. natural. That's one of my favorite things about you, Anna, is the way that you communicate because yeah. the way that you select your words is so intentional. And you, unlike mm-hmm. all of us fire mercuries, you don't really use that many filler words. You've replaced um with intentional silence. And I don't know if that's like your performance background or if that's just been who you've always been. Wow. Thank you for those reflections. That's really, that, that, that touches me. Um, <laughs> you know, that with filler words, it's funny. I remember it's gosh, this is such a cool lens to be looking at my whole life through, but <laughs> I'm just realizing like the, my brain has changed by virtue of learning other languages mm. and it has like learning French. I got better at speaking English, like by virtue of learning and Sierra, you know, French grammar is its own beast. Um, <laughs> but like bringing that in and like literally the re-education of my brain and recognizing what a precious gift words in general are that language is such a profound and underutilized tool and gift. Mm -hmm. I mean, my grandfather used to carry around in his wallet, a list of the 10 most misspelled words. So he could just pull Mm -hmm. out my mom still has it. And it's like handwritten in ink on this little strip of paper. And he was a, I come from a lot of like wordsmiths and people who appreciate language. And I love, I used to read the thesaurus as a child. Like, I mean, it was just, and I still, I mean, now there's thesaurus.com, but just this, like the infinite possibility of language and even like getting into like translation and how like certain poets, it is impossible to translate them into other Mm -hmm. languages because they capture such an essence that is germane to that language that they're writing in that we can grasp at the meaning we can grasp at the spirit, but there's something about that, like root expression is, is, well, I don't want to say completely lost, but it gets altered when it gets changed. And so I, I'm a firm believer. I have these daydreams about, you know, like what would it like all of the wordsmiths that are pulling onto our planet, everything from like, you know, songwriters and like kids and uh, like America's education system is something that desperately needs um, deep support and funding, but to even play with bringing in the gift of vocabulary, like in the English language is such a holy mess that it, and it's like, it's so flexible too. Like we can keep playing with it. We can keep changing it. The language itself is changing constantly. So I love being able to slow down enough to choose words, but also to put words to like the insane lattice that is like my imagination. And like, it's taken me again, like to my forties to like slow down enough to be like, okay, what are the words that are wanting to come through? Because Mm -hmm. I used to um and like constantly, and my father would come down on me like an anvil. And I was like, okay, well, what if I, what, what would it be like to slow down enough to drop all the ums and drop all the likes? Mm -hmm. And that was a crazy moment for me. Cause it was like, oh, there's so much more that's possible yeah. as long and as people put my body down enough to find those words. And people will listen, if not listen even more because of the intention that you're placing in that slowness. It's mind blowing. It's amazing. Oh. 
It's huh. so good. It's so good. The language there. I, I think that that's something that we need to all put a little bit more on Capricorn than maybe we have in the past, because I have some prominent Capricorn placement people in my life too, that just really, really appreciate the like the the source, you know, thinking of my mom who like came home, like with just stars in her eyes with a new dictionary when I was little. And I was like, what is wrong with you? You know, but that now <laughs> I appreciate it more, but like little kid me, I just really feel like Capricorn has that, that really connection to value in the same way that maybe objects hold um, value. It's the way that different words and different, I love what you said about language, how you can't translate something you can't translate the full essence of something. And that is such a, a, another level of different language that I don't feel like we appreciate as much. And just like what Martha said about being of service in that way, like you just saying that and explaining that to us now, I'm like, wow, I'm going to, uh, I know like part of me knows that, but the way in which you worded that to us, I just feel like that's going to sit with me in such a really nice way. And that was a service. So thank you. Mm. You're so welcome. I guess, well, we have our, our last question here. It does deal a little bit with language and, you know, mental development and speech because Mercury is ruling all of those things. Did you have any delays in speech as a child? Yes, you did. I did. I had a, I couldn't um, say my R's. Um, and so I had to go to a speech pathologist growing up, but also interestingly enough, I, something at birth something in my ears didn't finish forming. And so I actually couldn't hear very well as a Capricorn ears. child. <laughs> Capricorn ears. That sounds like a new superhero, a little boring, but very exciting all the same. <laughs> 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 but I, when I started speaking, I could only hear the first syllable of words. And so I kind of like made up my own language and my mom, like to this day, like there's only three words that I remember, like that she's told me that I used to say, but there was, it took me a really long time to, um, to literally hear. Uh, and then when it came time to speaking, like, like getting my speech impediment educated into like full expression of the letter R, which I used to say all. So, oh, but yeah, British, that, that was British fascinating. Yeah, <laughs> that is really fascinating. I mean, the reason we asked that is because um, Capricorn being ruled by Saturn, you know, Saturn is the planet of delays. So we were curious if maybe you had had a delay in communication or a delay in mental development. Interesting. That's that's fascinating. Yeah, I did not. I was I mean, I would say, yeah, it took me a really long time to grow hair. Everyone thought I was a little boy for the longest time. I couldn't hear particularly well. And then my speech impediment. Yeah, that's fascinating. That's funny about your hair because you're a Leo moon. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm grateful I didn't know that much when I was that that old. But it was <laughs> yeah. old. It did come time to communicating. I was horribly shy, horribly shy. Oh. Like I did not, I wanted to communicate. I wanted to be at the front of the class. I wanted to be on stage. Um, but my uh, self-confidence was very low, but also I was just very Mm self-conscious and like, it took, it was because of theater, like getting cast in theater roles. Then I could get on stage. Then there was a format. There were lines I could memorize. There was blocking I could do. And like, certainly when I became a full-time performer, like all bets were off. I was like, Oh, fun. Like, yay. Like there Mm -hmm. is a container to this communication. Like there's, there's, there are prescribed roles. I'm the performer. There's the audience. There's a fourth wall. Mm-hmm. I can communicate. I can connect with them as much as I want. But at the end of the day, like I'm coming out here doing my thing and disappearing back into the dressing room. Like I don't need to be interacting with them. And as like I performed full time for almost 15 years and like initially I was like, oh yeah, I want to go meet the audience. And then like, you know, seven, eight, nine years in, I'm like, screw that noise. I'm, I'll be in the dressing room. Like, I don't want to mm-hmm. talk to anybody. I'm showing up for work and I'm getting out yep. like it. So, yeah. Wow. It sounds like words and communication have been such a major theme and like part of your journey, not like just even the fact that there was that delay early on. And then there was such an importance placed from your ancestry from generations before you of how important words are mm-hmm. and almost like a sense of pressure. Mm. It's interesting that you say that too, because, and I, I'm going to owe some of this certainly to 
my Pisces moon, but also I have Jupiter in cancer, like conjunct my MM Coeli. So there's also some like Mm -hmm. shadow expansive stuff, like directly opposite my Mercury. So like, I realized that that's its own dynamic, but Mm -hmm. I, you know, more recently, like going through lots of initiations and the different work and the different, you know, sort of energy medicine schools that I've been through, like my ancestors are showing up and I'm like, whoa, what is this information like coming through that I then need to sort of translate on out into paper? Like my grandmother straight up showed up and I was like, and she died when I was five. And I was like, huh, I'm named after her. And like, we have a lot of similarities, even though again, like I never knew her, my father never talks about her, but I was like, why am I seeing you right now? She's like, cause I'm here. I was like, oh, <laughs> what, are you, what? Like, and that was last year, you know, like that it's, it's still like, even that, like the, the, and I've had multiple experiences of not just like my most recent ancestors, but like many, many, many of our ancestors. I mean, within five generations, we descend from something like 10,000 people. I mean, like, it's crazy, like how those numbers like mm. add up, but I've had several visceral experiences of coming into connection with them being like, holy bananas. Like I am at the receiving end of so much will love, but also information mm. that what do I choose to do with this? What do I choose to do with it? Ooh, what a great mercury statement to end on. I'm at the receiving end of so much information. What do I choose to do with it? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Yeah. at> <laughs> <laughs> It's been so fascinating and fun and, and really like insightful to get your thoughts on, I don't know how, how you process the world, getting a little, you know, peek into how you process the world mercurially. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all so much. This has been so much fun. And like, thank you for giving me like deeper insight into me just by virtue of the questions you're asking me, like (laughs) all be writing prompts like easily mm. so just thank you so much all of you and it's such it's such a pleasure to to be in connection with the threes of you so. <laughs> uh martha why did we uh, interview the lovely anna for capricorn mercury today because the stars made us do it <laughs>